Hello and welcome to this Saturday Radiology te Teaching Session by Team Radio Gyan. My name is Dr. Amar Odare. I'm the founder of the radiology teaching website, radiogyan.com. In today's video, we'll be discussing 10 interesting fetal imaging spotter cases. Our speaker today is Dr. Geeta Krishna. She's an MD in radiology. She's the head of Medicure Plus Diagnostics in Hyderabad, specializing in fetal imaging procedures, women's imaging, and general radiology. She brings a wealth of expertise to her practice. She is uh, an avid teacher, and uh, you can follow her on her Instagram handle, fetal underscore imaging under sciences. Uh, she does, she says a lot of interesting cases and does a lot of teaching. Her motto is, okay, just a minute. Sorry about that. There's an echo here. Okay, uh, so without wasting any further time, I would request uh, Dr. Geeta Krishna to take over and start uh, uh, start her presentation today. Over to you, Dr. Geeta. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Myself, I'm Dr. Geeta, and I have been practicing since 2015, and I'm in the field of fetal medicine. And um, I have wonderful cases, uh, as most of them, <laughs> most of you must be knowing about it in my Instagram page. So let us start the presentation. So here is the first case. This is the 2D as well as 3D image. This one is the 2D and the 3D image. So this fetus is around 12 weeks. And there are three cystic structures on both sides of the neck, as well as in the posterior aspect of the neck. So these, this was the 3D image that we took. And what is the diagnosis? Let us see the comments. So this is a case of lymphangioma bilaterally, which is a cystic hygroma, as well as the posterior cyst, which is suspected to be the cystic hygroma, is not cystic hygroma. It is the encephalocele. These are the cerebellar hemispheres, both ventricle, cisterna magna, which is directly continuing along with the cyst. And there is no calvarium. There is a big defect of occipital bone here. So this is a case of cystic hygroma and associated occipital encephalocele. So cystic hygroma is a fluid in the third spaces causing anasarca with internal septations. If we see any cystic structure posteriorly at the nape of the neck with no internal septations, we have to suspect some meningocele or uh, encephalocele, whatsoever it is. So the, if there is a calvarial defect of occipital bone, the first DD is cystic hygroma with cystic hygroma is encephalocele. So because there are no internal septations and calvarial defect, we could consider this as both coexisted conditions. So we'll go to the next slide. The spotted two. This is the most interesting case that I've gone through in my entire career. This is the 3D image that I could get because the fetus uh, is very much cooperative with good uh, amount of amniotic fluid. So I, I was able to take good images of this fetus. So the head of the fetus is seen fused to the thorax here. So what is this condition called as? Let us wait for the comments.
let's get back to the comments and see yes it is an indian cephaly so indian cephaly is a condition where there is partial or total absence of cervical thoracic vertebrae and head is completely retroflexed and is fixed with significantly short spine it is usually associated with other neural tube defects like mino meningocele or encephalus there are certain subtypes which is indian cephaly apertus or indian cephaly clausus apertus is a type which contains encephalocele and clausus contains spinal defect so this is the same similar case the i mean the same uh, image of the same uh, fetus so these are the 3d as well as 2d images that fetus also contain another multiple congenital anomalies like this so here we can see a single orbit as well as two globes what is this condition called as let us wait for the comments let us see so this is a case of cyclopia with proboscis cyclopia is a single midline orbit with either single globe or two globes which are placed side by side and uh, the proboscis this is the proboscis it is an anterior appendage which is there in the midline of forehead this is the 3d image that we could get so i'll show you the gross specimen images it is a graphic content warning this was the fetus after delivery because uh, the patient she came all the way from a very rural area a thanda area nearby to hyderabad she had never got any scans done before so um, by the time she came to me it is almost 29 to 30 weeks in one of my most uh, favorite and unforgettable case it is because these conditions are very very rarely seen and it also had certain uh, heart defects as well as situs inversus totalis etc so this is my most uh, beautiful uh, case in my career we'll switch on to the next spotter these are the sagittal as well as coronal images of spine so what is your diagnosis here let us wait for the comments we'll check the comments yes it is hemi vertebra so as this is the sagittal image we can see the continuity of the skin line but a focal kyphotic defect is noted here which is caused due to the hemi vertebra the key here is to screen the spine in coronal view where the alignment is very subtle which is causing 
scoliosis towards the anterior aspect due to this hemivertebra. So hemivertebra is because of uh, lack of formation of other half of the vertebral body. It is the most common cause of congenital scoliosis. The wedge-shaped column noted with subtle curvature showing convexity towards the hemivertebra is the key here. There are multiple subtypes depending upon the orientation, level, and attachment. We should be aware that the key here is to screen the spine in coronal view. Let us go to the next slide. So this is a spotter number five. This is a fetus of 21 weeks old. Uh, we have done this uh, screening at 16 weeks as well. It was absolutely normal at that time. Now we are able to see a continuity from fourth ventricle to cisterna magna with widened Blake's pouch. What is your diagnosis here? Let us check the comments. Joe Burt's Dandy Walker. That's nice. So this is a Dandy Walker variant or isolated uh, inferior vermian hypoplasia. See. Blake's pouch is a small cyst-like structure, a thin septal-like structure, which is seen parallelly oriented in cisterna magna. So if it is absent or fenestrated or if it is splaying towards or away, it is abnormal. This can only be diagnosed after 18 weeks because before 18 weeks, the metapore is not seen. Here are the take-home points in isolated inferior vermis and hypoplasia. Partial absence of uh, inferior vermis, walls of Blake's pouch and cisterna magna septa are the markers here. A small gap between vermis and brainstem is normal till 18 weeks. It is called as Blake's metapore. Once the pouch fenestrates, the metapore becomes foramen of Majendi. It is after 19 weeks only. Blake's pouch widening with direct communication with metapore is completely abnormal. So here is the video. Make sure that you screen the head in an angled position, which is, which is in blue line here, so that Cavum septum pellucidum, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, and cisterna magna are covered. Then only this view will come and will help us in diagnosing isolated inferior vermian hypoplasia. Posterior fossa will look normal, but it is not in this variant type of dandy walker. This is absolutely normal before 18 weeks. So we shouldn't get confused for inferior vermian hypoplasia before 18 weeks. Next spotter is, this is the case of 22 weeks old fetus. This is the axial image and this is the coronal image because the fetus is in absolute anhydramnious condition. I'm unable to provide much images than this. And this is also done in uh, transvaginal view only. So what is your diagnosis here? Let us wait for the comments. We'll check. Let's 
CCA Genesis. No. CCA Genesis is partially correct, but not completely. See, um, this mimics cavum septum pellucidum in axial. Played choroid plexus. There is no septation that is separating frontal horns from the cavum septum pellucidum here, which means it is a type of fusion defect. It is lobar holoprosencephaly or septo optic dysplasia. The findings here include absent cavum septum pellucidum, interhemispheric fissure is absolutely normal, but there is a midline fused ventricular segment, which is only the frontal part. The ventricular segment is always confused for CSP, cavum septum pellucidum. So make sure that you screen the fetus in coronal view as well. MRI is advised to look for optic nerve atrophy in case of septoptic dysplasia. And rest of the structures like thalami are not fused. So hol lobar holoprosencephaly is mostly missed and, got, and, get, and we get confused for uh, cavum septum pellucidum. I'm just going back to have a look again. These are the fused frontal horns, choroid plexus, and there is absent cavum septum pellucidum. These conditions are usually associated with Corpus callosal agencies. So, corpus callosal agencies is also partially right answer. We'll go to the next slide, spot the seven. This is uh, one of my closest uh, cousin's case, actually. So, she came with uh, spotting. This is a, a 2D as well as 3D image acquired. She had previous history of cesarean. And uh, I could able to see a small cyst and a cyst-like structure within at scar region. What is your diagnosis here? Let us check the comments. Yes, it is correct topic. So what, why is it uh, so important to me is because uh, the most common differential diagnosis in this particular area is a, a C-section scar niche. Because we are able to see the yolk sac and the tiny fetal node here, that doesn't mean that we will be able to miss some of some other differential diagnosis. Especially if the sac is in the process of expulsion, we will be definitely getting confused with a scar ectopic. To diagnose a scar ectopic, what we have, what we have, actually supposed to see is the myometrial bulge and thickening because the scar region there is a dimple here which will come like this but if there is no dimple and there is a myometrial bulge here we can be able to see the myometrial bulge clearly and also there is residual reaction around this sac which means that the sac got implanted ectopically at the scar region. So around regular sac with yolk sac, focal myometrial bulge anteriorly and decidual reaction around the scar region is the point here for diagnosis. The key point and take home message is always consider differential diagnosis like scar niche, sac in the process of expulsion or when the sac is at the level or simple cluster cis.
let us go to the next slide. Spotter 8. This is the case of 13 weeks old fetus in 3D as well as 2D images. There is a large intra-abdominal cyst here. What is your diagnosis? Let us wait for the comments. Let's check the comments. Mega sisters, yes, it is mega sisters. Mega sisters is the soft marker in first trimester. When the urinary bladder is uh, more than seven mm in diameter, it is abnormal in first trimester. More than thirty mm in second trimester, and more than sixty mm in third trimester. So make sure that you measure it in the longest diameter possible. So the key point is if the eyeballing or your sense says that the bladder is literally little large or abnormal, measure it and report it. Most Dr. Geeta, a couple of uh, uh, students have mentioned mesenteric cyst uh, as comments. Uh, is there a way that, and even I have that question, like, is there a way that we can distinguish that from a large bladder? Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Uh, see, mesenteric cyst usually doesn't occupy the entire lower abdomen and then go to the upper abdomen. Most of the mesenteric cysts take up the upper part of the abdomen and then go probably, the, I mean, the epicenter of the cyst is somewhere el elsewhere in the abdomen, but not in the pelvis. Urinary bladder and uh, yeah, something related to the pelvic, pelvic and uh, genitourinary gonadal cysts are with the epicenter in the pelvis. Perfect. And with the mesenteric cyst, you may see a separate exactly. bladder at some point. Exactly. So, so, and one more thing is that make sure that we have to trace the umbilical arteries. Yeah, and the umbilical arteries are widely splayed uh, in megacystis. Whereas mesenteric cyst, it is uh, not widely split. They are somewhere else, right? So umbilical arteries uh, are also be to be screened here. So ne next slide, spotter nine. So what is your diagnosis here? There is two bump-like structures, which are isoechoic to the decidual reaction projecting into the gestational sac. What is your diagnosis? There is a thin uh, uh, membrane is seen with no fetal pole and a tiny yolk sac is also seen here. It's a blighted ovum, but still. What is this structure? What is the diagnosis and its importance? Let us wait for the comments. We shall check the comments. Chorionic bump, exactly. That's a chorionic bump. So what is the clinical significance of chorionic bump? They are round, convex, isoechoic soft tissue bulges that project from chorio-decidual surface into the gestational sac with no vascularity. They are typically located at the thickest part of the developing placenta, which is chorion fundrosum. And what is the clinical significance is there is increased fold of risk of miscarriage here. The measurement of the chorionic bump and number of bumps, if at all it is one, two or number, uh, will measure the size as well as number and record it. Because there is increased risk of miscarriage, the gynecologist will be little vigilant about it. 
we'll go to the next slide this is the last potter and also my favorite one where some of the signs that are proved to be correct are uh, wrong so there is a continuous skin line here but a small bump is there the cerebellum looks normal with the normal cisterna magna this is a case of 12 weeks fetus with a bump in the spine region what is your diagnosis Let's check the comments. Arnold Chiari. Yes, Harini is correct. Closed neural tube defect. Ajit Jain is also correct. Um, see, the skin is continuous. This is a closed type of spina bifida. Diagnosing spina bifida at a very early gestation is a challenging task to the radiologist as well as an ob obstetrician. Close spina bifida diagnosis requires subtle signs like crash sign, failure to visualize the intracranial translucency, banana cerebellum, lemon-shaped skull, paralysis of uh, cerebellar peduncles, or straightening of metencephalon, or obliteration of cisterna magna. This is the gross specimen image where there is the defect here. So we are taught about the crash sign. I, I will show the image uh, video of uh, crash sign from London School of uh, Ultrasound. The cerebellum is very close to the calvarium occipital bone with effaced cisterna magna. They say that it is a normal brain. Whereas if at all there is any crash sign, spinal defects are most commonly affected. That is what is their theory. But in our case, the brain looked absolutely normal. All the findings, all the subtle signs like crash sign, intracranial translucency, banana cerebellum, lemon-shaped skull, paralysis, obliteration of uh, cisterna magna, everything are not there. Only a small bump is there. See, the cerebellum looks normal, the cisterna magna looks normal. So my take-home point here is, don't always believe in all the signs that are theoretically correct. Sometimes they may be wrong practically. My take-home points with the spotters that I have kept today. Make sure that you screen each and every part of the organ in axial coronal as well as sagittal views. If at all, these views are not feasible, at least try to get some other parasagittal, paracoronal or whatsoever is possible so that you get a clear 3D or 4D image accordingly. Most common differential diagnosis and the nearest differential diagnosis possible is always suggested to be added down some of the classic signs may be absent but doesn't exclude it from being abnormal minor findings and eyeballing make sure that you practice to monitor and report these subtle findings because the more you see the more number of normal cases you see you feel there is a problem in this particular uh, organ or something because practice makes your eyeballing and everything perfect Thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity. Those were phenomenal cases. And 
uh even your teaching style is so good i'm sure uh, we have so the comment section itself was so busy that just says how good the cases were and how your presentation was thank you dr thank Gita, you. for doing this again i know this is a thank saturday you, you. and weekend and uh it's evening so it's uh i'm taking away from your family time but this would really no, no, that's an absolute great great pleasure actually to meet you and uh, all the comment section i'm i'm feeling really happy to see everybody uh, responding it very nicely yes perfect uh, and then um, I mentioned it before, but if you want to learn more such that like if you want to have uh, Dr. Gita has a very active Instagram account, you can check her at fetal underscore imaging underscore sciences on Instagram. She shares a lot of uh, videos. And the good thing about her account, like I personally follow it, is that uh, images like images are okay like you, uh, uh, you spotter images are fine but she also shares videos which makes it easier to understand uh concepts because fetal ultrasound uh when you have still images it can be difficult uh, uh, to understand the case and unless you understand it you're not going to diagnose it uh, when you get the case so she shares a lot of videos as well so that helps the under helps to understand the concepts better so uh, that's an amazing account to follow and uh, uh I loved the session. I was completely engaged throughout. And let's aim to have more than 200 likes uh, for this video. And then we can ask Dr. Geeta to do another session for us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for attending it live. If you're attending this later, thank you. Uh, if you reached up to here and follow us for more uh, content on your favorite social media platform. Um, I'm Amar, I'm signing off, and we do these sessions on most Saturday, on few Saturdays. Uh, so you can subscribe and click the bell notification. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.